Hey there everybody, my name is Rich Feldenberg and I'm a pediatric nephrologist and I create videos about science and medicine. This is sort of a special video because it's actually my very first video for my new YouTube channel. So I thought the topic I would choose for my very first video would be something relatively simple and something that I get asked a lot. When people ask me what I do and I tell them I'm a nephrologist, it's not too uncommon that I get sort of a confused look and people then ask me, well, what is a nephrologist? I've never really heard of that before. Nif, 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 what? Now I've heard of a cardiologist, and I've heard of a dermatologist. I've been to a psychiatrist, don't you know? But I've never been to a nephrologist. Should I go to one? So since I am a pediatric nephrologist, I feel like I can answer that question for you. So a nephrologist is simply a doctor who specializes in the kidney. The word nephrologist comes from the Greek nephros, which means relating to the kidney, and ology, which means king. So nephrologists are kidney kings. No, that's not right. So ology, of course, means any science or branch of knowledge. So nephrology is simply the science and branch of knowledge that relates to the kidneys. And nephrologists are the doctors who specialize in kidney disease and how the kidney works and functions. Now I'm a pediatric nephrologist, which means I'm a kidney doctor who takes care of children that have kidney disease. It may surprise people that children get kidney problems, but actually quite a few children have kidney disease and kids can get a variety of problems related to the kidneys and the urinary tract. Some of these problems may be relatively minor and easy to fix or live with, but other forms are very severe and sometimes even result in the need for a kidney transplant. There are many more adults that have kidney disease than there are children with kidney disease, so most nephrologists actually take care of adults that have diseases of the kidney. And because there are so many more nephrologists that take care of adults, those nephrologists are simply called nephrologists or sometimes adult nephrologists to differentiate them from the pediatric nephrologists which only take care of children. Although there are quite a lot of different types of diseases that can harm the kidneys, in adults some of the really common types are diabetes which can over time damage the kidneys and cause what's called diabetic nephropathy and high blood pressure which can also lead to kidney damage and kidney failure. In pediatric nephrology we see children that are born with congenital defects of the kidneys and urinary tract, but sometimes we see children that were born with completely normal kidneys that then develop disease or disorder that damage the kidney. There are many types of this as well, but one example might be a condition such as lupus. That's just one example. There are many others, and throughout this series we'll talk about some of the different types of kidney problems that can affect both children and adults. Now don't feel bad if you've never heard of a nephrologist or of nephrology, but I am surprised that more people haven't heard of nephrologists because kidney disease actually is an important problem. There are many adults that have chronic kidney disease. According to the National Kidney Foundation, there are about 37 million adults with chronic kidney disease in the United States. That's 15% of the population, or one in seven adults. And remarkably, it is estimated that about 90% of these individuals do not even know that they have chronic kidney disease. How is that possible? Well, kidney disease can be quite silent until it progresses to an extremely advanced state. So people can feel perfectly normal and healthy and not realize that they have a serious issue going on. And that's why it's so important to go to your physician for regular checkup, so they can make sure that all your organs and body systems are working normally, including your kidneys. Now, the most severe form of chronic kidney disease is what's called end-stage renal disease. That means your kidneys are so severely affected by damage and disease that you need either dialysis or a kidney transplant to stay alive. And there are about 785,000 Americans that have end-stage renal disease. And while I said that kidney disease is more common in adults than in children, it's still a pretty significant problem even in kids. Based on data from 2017, there were about 6,400 children with chronic kidney disease in the United States. And in 2020, 710 children received a kidney transplant with over 1,000 children still on the waiting list who were waiting for a kidney transplant. And kidney disease has a huge financial cost to healthcare, 
and the economy. About $130 billion is spent in healthcare related to kidney disease in the United States each year. So you can see it's not a trivial problem at all. Now, in addition to taking care of diseases of the kidney, the nephrologist also has a few other areas of expertise as well. These include the areas of electrolyte disorder, fluid disorder, and high blood pressure or hypertension. The reason for this is simply that the kidneys are central to regulating the balance of electrolytes in the blood, the amount of water in the body, and regulating the blood pressure in the body as well. The electrolytes are things like your sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, phosphorus, and a variety of other salts. And these have to be very tightly regulated in the right balance for the cells in the body to function normally. A major function of the kidney is simply to regulate all these salts in the proper balance. So the nephrologist is trained to diagnose and treat a variety of these electrolyte imbalances. For example, low blood sodium, which is called hyponatremia, is a very common electrolyte disorder and can have potentially many causes. So a nephrologist may be consulted when it's a difficult or confusing case to diagnose or the management or treatment is not clear cut. Low sodium is just one example, but there are many different types of electrolyte disorders that can occur. The kidney also manages the amount of water in the body to make sure that we are not either fluid overloaded nor dehydrated. And as I said before, the kidney is central to regulating the blood pressure, and it does this through a hormone system called the RAS system. And although most forms of hypertension are not due to kidney disease, hypertension is very frequently seen in people that do have kidney disease. The majority of people with high blood pressure, however, have what we call essential hypertension, which simply means that it's not really due to another identifiable disease. It's simply there on its own and is probably related to a mixture of factors, often hereditary. There's a family history of high blood pressure, but can also be worsened by problems such as a high salt intake in the diet, a sedentary lifestyle, or being overweight. Because there are so many adults that do have high blood pressure, the general internist and family practitioner are very comfortable managing most patients with high blood pressure. In the pediatric world, historically, there have been many fewer children that have had high blood pressure, although that seems to be rapidly changing, and we now see quite a few kids that have high blood pressure. The majority of these are also essential hypertension due to some of the same factors as in adults. But in kids, the chance that there could be some secondary form of hypertension, meaning related to some other disease like kidney disease, for example, becomes more and more likely. So for children with high blood pressure, whether it's essential or not, usually the pediatric nephrologist is the specialist who both diagnoses and treats those patients. And even in adults, some cases of high blood pressure, especially ones that are complex or difficult to treat, might still be treated by a nephrologist. Now, because the nephrologist also deals with people who have very severe forms of chronic kidney disease, like end-stage renal disease. We are also the doctors who prescribe and supervise dialysis, and that can be dialysis in a dialysis unit or sometimes home dialysis. And dialysis is simply removing the waste products from the blood that build up through metabolism, removing the extra water that the kidney normally should be excreting, and keeping the electrolytes in the right balance. And nephrologists are the specialists who manage kidney transplant patients as well. Now, the nephrologist does not do the transplant operation itself, that is done by a transplant surgeon, but the nephrologists are specialists in managing the anti-rejection medications that are necessary to keep the kidney transplant from being rejected by the body. And they are trained to manage the potential complications of a kidney transplant, which can be things like transplant rejection or opportunistic infections which can affect people that have had an organ transplant because they are immunosuppressed with the anti-rejection medication. But because kidney transplant technology and the medical science of transplantation has come so far in the last few decades, there are many people with a kidney transplant that lead very healthy and happy lives. Now the nephrologist also performs kidney biopsies. And biopsy is a type of diagnostic procedure where a small piece of the kidney is taken out through a needle and by analyzing that tissue under a microscope, different types of kidney diseases can be diagnosed. And by having the proper diagnosis, we can then determine which might be the best treatment for that particular disease. So now you know what nephrology is. In future episodes on my channel, we'll talk about general wellness and health, including kidney health, how the kidney works, other topics in science that would be fun to talk about. So stay tuned to my channel. Keep it renal.